Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what I have for you here is a nice, interesting algebra word problem. So let's go ahead and read the problem. It says, separate 27, the number 27, into, uh, into two parts, i.e. two numbers, whose product is 92. What are the numbers? Okay, so uh, obviously I gave you a hint here. You're going to need to use uh, some algebra to solve this problem. But to beyond that, I really want to give you the full opportunity to figure this thing out. Now, if you could solve this problem, I'm going to put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here is the problem. Separate 27 into two parts whose product is 92. What are the numbers? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The numbers are 23 and 4. Now, obviously, if we add 23 and uh, 4, we get back to 27. So that's what we're talking about, at least uh, if you're a bit confused on what the problem was stating. Again, we wanted to separate 27 into two parts, i.e. two different numbers, right? So whose product is 92? So 23 plus 4 is 27, and then 23 times 4 is, of course, 92. All right, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that is super good. Matter of fact, definitely good enough for a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know how to solve a quadratic equation word problem. So yes, indeed, we are talking about quadratic equations. We're gonna end up with the quadratic equation in this particular word problem. Of course, you need to know how to solve quadratic equations and that's what really word problems at least in uh, mathematics especially algebra are about or any course um, at the algebra level and beyond when you read a word problem of course you're trying to figure out what you need to do generally speaking you're going to end up with some sort of equation okay it could be a quadratic equation it could be a different type of equation it could be a system of equation so from this point forward you need to know how to solve those respective types of equations. So uh, anything that you get confused about, you know, during the course of me explaining this problem, make sure you take note and be like, oh, I forgot how to do that, this or that. Just make yourself a nice little math shopping list, just as if you're gonna to go to the store and pick up these respective math skills. Because if you don't take care of something that you know you don't understand, it will come back to haunt you over and over and over. So I'll give you some specific guidance on uh, this stuff here, uh, specific things as we get into the solution. But let's go ahead and get into the problem right now. So the first thing is, um, I kind of have like a rule of three when it comes to math word problems, okay? So the rule of three is namely, before you start doing anything, read the problem at a minimum of three times. So the first time you read the problem, just get your bearings on what's going on. The second time, uh, read the problem, understand it more thoroughly, and then start to think, you know, okay, how can I solve this problem? Start, you know, coming up with strategies or tactics. And then the third time, before you start doing anything, make sure you understand the question. So what are the numbers, right? So we're going to take 27, break it into two different numbers, okay? But the product is 92. So what are the numbers? Okay, so... Uh, we are, again, uh, talking about finding unknown values. So what are the numbers? Anytime you're asked to find uh, or search or solve for an unknown value, you're going to need a variable. And anytime you use a variable, we are talking about algebra. So let's uh, let x uh, equal to one number. Okay. So if x is equal to one number, what could we do to represent the other number, right? Because we're going to separate 27 into two parts. Well, we could say 27 minus x, right? Because if we have this number x and 27 minus x, so 27 minus x is one number. And if we add this other number, okay, uh, back to, back to uh, 27 minus x, so these two numbers, right? This would be one number. This is the other number. The x is cross cancel and the sum is 27, okay? So you gotta make sure you understand that. And this is typically 
the most challenging part um, of the problem for a lot of students is to think of expressions, variable expressions that can represent what's going on. So, you know, this part here, if you're confused about it, if you're thinking, well, I don't know if I would have been able to come up with that on your own. My only um, uh, kind of advice there is the more uh, word problems you do, the better you're going to get. I mean, it's really as simple as that. So if you need help, uh, more help beyond this problem in algebra word problems, I have a ton of additional uh, word problems on my YouTube channel and, uh, of course, in my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 or Pre-Algebra course, whatever uh, course it may be. Uh, not only do I uh, do word problems in those courses, I do all the kind of supportive instruction that you're going to need to know as well. All right, so here we have two expressions. X is equal to one number, and 27 minus X could be the other number, right? So we're going to uh, separate 27 into these two uh, uh, different um, parts right here. Okay, so now that we have uh, 27 broken up into two parts, we need to use the uh, next part of the problem to come up with an equation. And that's really the next thing. Once you have some variable expressions established from the problem, you can't solve for these um, for an unknown value without constructing an equation. So that's what we need to do. So uh, let's take a look at some more details in the problem. It says uh, separate 27 into two parts and uh, whose product, these two parts, whose product, product means what? Multiplication. So that if we multiply these two together is 92. So the uh, product is 92. So here we end up with this equation here. So this is one number, right? X. And here's the other number, 27 minus X. This is the product of those two numbers, right? And it is 92. So remember the word is, and um, when you're translating a verbal phrase, is always the equal sign. And there you go, there is 92. All right, so hopefully this all makes sense. Now, if this is like, um, you know, understandable for, in other words, if you're able to come up with this, uh, get to this point in the problem, that is very, very good, okay? Because this point forward really um, comes down to your ability to solve these type of equations. And again, we're going to be dealing with quadratic equations. So this is kind of phase two or the next step, uh, next, uh, step of the problem solving process. So now let's concentrate on solving this equation. Let's go to get into this right now. All right, so here we have x times 27 minus x equals 92. So what do we need to do? Well, first thing is we got to distribute this x into 27 and minus x. We're going to end up with 27x minus x squared is equal to 92. So here we have an x squared. So now we are thinking quadratic equation. This is a second degree polynomial, meaning there's going to be two solutions. Now, at this point as well, you need to know a lot about solving quadratic equations. There's various methods and techniques. Uh, and of course, that's a whole nother uh, set of lessons and instructions. So if you're not that strong with quadratic equations, especially if you're an algebra student, that is something you definitely have to resolve because uh, solving quadratic equations are just going to be in your life if you're taking uh, this level of mathematics. Okay, so looking at what's going on here, uh, we're going to end up, uh, we have a quadratic trinomial. Now, this thing right here is not what we call in standard form. So standard form is when we have uh, everything set equal to zero. So we have this equal to 92. We don't want to do that. We want to move this 92 over here, and we want to put the x squared first. So we've got to shuffle these terms around so that this equation is in standard form. Okay, so I'm going to move the negative x squared in front, okay? So we have negative x squared plus 27x, and then I'll subtract 92 from both sides. And now I have this equation written in standard form. So standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Now, for those of you that are familiar with the quadratic formula, if you're going to get your a, b, and c values, these coefficient values right here, this quadratic trinomial has to be in standard form. Okay, so now what do we do at this point? Well, at this point in the problem, we don't need to just rush to the quadratic formula. So if you're thinking, I want to do the quadratic formula, that's good thinking. Okay, however, 
what you want to do is to attempt to factor this. Can you, can you factor this quadratic uh, trinomial? Okay, so you should always attempt to uh, factor things. Uh, and if you can factor it, it's always the better um, uh, approach, okay? Now, if you cannot factor this, then we'll get into the quadratic formula. Okay, so now, before we go any further, some of you might uh, see how I went from here, or I went from, I changed the equation from here to this. Now, why did I do that? Well, you see here we have a negative x squared. Uh, typically, uh, when you have it, like a negative x squared uh, plus, say, like 27x minus 92, I personally like to just get rid of this negative right here, okay, in front of x squared. It's just my preference. It won't change the problem, but it'll make your life a lot easier. So what we can do is literally divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. So negative 1x squared divided by negative 1 is positive 1 or 1x squared, okay? Uh, it's just easier when this um, leading coefficient's uh, positive, especially when you're trying to factor, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm just, uh, can easily divide both sides by negative one. So all these signs here become the opposite, right? So this negative is going to become positive, this positive is gonna become negative, and this negative is gonna become positive, and then zero divided by negative one is just zero. All right, so now let's go ahead and focus in on this quadratic uh, trinomial and see if we can factor this. Well, this thing can be factored, right? Now, this is what we call, I like to call this a case one uh, quadratic trinomial, which means that the leading coefficient is one. If this leading coefficient, this number right here, was anything other than one, like three x squared, well, that requires a different kind of approach to factor. Okay, there's, an, again, we're getting into a lot of different subskills here. So anything that you need uh, trouble with, like especially factoring, or sorry, anything you need help with, um, you gotta, you know, like uh, really uh, take some notes here, be like, okay, I'm not so strong at factoring. So if, for example, if you resolve your factoring weaknesses, okay, it, everything in algebra is gonna get so much better, all right? So just, um, you know, make those kind of notes, but follow through, you know, follow through and do something about it. That's the only way you're gonna improve in math. Anyways, in this case, because this is a one, there's a nice shortcut technique. I go right to this number right here and look for factors of 92 that add up, okay, factors of 92 are numbers that we multiply together such that we get back to 92. So for example, two and 46 gets me back to uh, 92, right? So the two and 46 is 92, but if I add two and 46, I can, I can get a 48 um, out of this, right? So two and 46, when you add these factors, I get a 48. Now, some of you might say, what are you doing here? Well, this is a great technique to factor these, what I call case one trinomials, where there's a one as a leading coefficient. So as I look at factors of 92, I'm like, oh, well, 46, I can go, that's two times 23. So I can have factors four times 23. I'm like, hey, four and 23, what I'm looking for is pairs of factors that add up to this middle coefficient. Okay, now that's negative 27, so 4 and 23 add up to 27. That's not good, but factors of 92 is also negative 4 times negative 23. A negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 4 times negative 23 is indeed positive 92, but when I add these up, I get negative 27. So these right here are my um, uh, the answers to my factor, okay, or my factors... Uh, what we call linear factors, all right? So what does that mean? Well, negative four and negative 23 add up to negative 27, which is that middle term. So when I go to factor this right here, here's my quadratic tri uh, trinomial. Uh, one of the factors is gonna be negative four. Here's negative four. And the other is gonna be negative 20, uh, negative, excuse me, negative 23 right here. Okay, see how I'm writing that? And like, it's so, so easy. So x minus four is one uh, factor and x minus, three, uh, x minus 23, excuse me, is the other factor. Now, if you're like, hmm, you know, like I don't really understand what you're saying. I know how to factor this. If you know how to factor this your own way, that's perfectly fine, okay? Again, you know, you're dealing with a 
bigger number here, 92. So you kind of have to do um, either this method or like a guess and check method, but just don't run to the quadratic formula. Now, this technique that I'm explaining is absolutely valuable. You need to know it. You want to learn it. So uh, I would direct you directly to my Algebra 1 course. All right, so here we were able to factor this quadratic trinomial into these two linear factors, x minus 4, x minus 4 times x minus 23. And this is, of course, equal to 0, meaning one or both of these factors is equal to 0. So the next step is we just set each of these uh, equal each of these factors equal to zero and solve. So x minus four is uh, equal to zero. So x is equal to four. X minus 23 is equal to zero. So x is equal to 23. And here are our two solutions. Again, we are talking about a quadratic equation, right? So there's always going to be two solutions. Now, some of you might be, you know, thinking, oh my goodness, this is just too much. I don't want to learn this. You know, I already got smoke coming out my ears. Listen, you can learn this, okay? But, you know, depending on where your math skills are, okay, here's like a little steps. <laughs> I'm getting kind of lazy with my steps. If your skills are down here currently, okay, and you need to be here, now, you know, I know like some of us are like, yeah, I don't want to take the time to climb the stairs. I've had to just jump and then, you know, kind of get up here and start my journey. Well, it doesn't work that way, right? You're going to have to, build your skills up to get to this point. It's no different than being like on a road trip. Here's point A and here's point B. If you're like right here and you're like, oh, I got seven more hours to drive. I wish I was right here, right? You just can't, you know, uh, uh, project yourself into the future and then just finish up right here. You're going to have to uh, pay your dues, um, you know, and finish that journey to get to that point. So math is no different so I think, um, uh, you know, once you accept that, you know, if, especially if you really want to improve in mathematics, just kind of settle in for the ride. Okay, okay, well, I just need to go through the process and just learn these skills step by step. And everything will get better for you when you kind of have that philosophy towards learning math. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.